what is VC? Yeah? So this is uh, John Doe. John Doe is an American investor, quite uh, well known. He's uh, one of the first investors or the early investors in uh, Google and in, in Amazon. And the way that he puts it, for sure better than, than I will, is the best way to predict the future is to create it. The second best way is to finance it. So in essence, what VC tries to do is to finance uh, finance the future, financing companies at, uh, at growth stage uh, before everybody else gets the chance to uh, kind of invest in them uh, through the, the public markets. Uh, we invest in uh, pre-profit companies, pre-revenue, and sometimes even pre-product. A little bit about how it works, the structure of, uh, of VC. So normally when you speak with, uh, with venture capitalists, you speak with uh, somebody who is part of the general partners or the structure of the general partners. These are the people that actually manage the money and they are the ones who are making the investment decisions. The limited partners uh, most of the time are uh, behind the scene. You don't see them as entrepreneurs. Uh, they're the one who uh, puts the majority of the money into the into this fund, the, the structure of a fund. This could be pension funds, could be um, high net worth individuals, family offices. Uh, in the case of Poland, there are uh, two, um, let's say, predominant or relatively big uh, players, uh, NCBR and, and PFR. Uh, both, in a way, uh, are connected to a governmental uh, institution. Yeah, so um, the LPs, GPs put the money inside the fund, and then the fund invests in the, um, um, in, the in the companies. Uh, how does the money, uh, how is the money distributed then? When you have a liquidation, or it can be an, an exit or, or an IPO, yeah? so either a strategic buyer is buying one of the companies. In essence, the shares are being uh, being traded for money. Money is flowing back into the fund, the, the proportion of it, and then being splitted between the limited partners and the um, the general partners. And uh, one thing to understand is that um, this is a high risk, high return business. Right? So, unlike uh, tradition, more traditional uh, investment tools, uh, where you have um, uh, the majority or yeah, the majority of the assets keep their value or increase in value, or, or at least this is the, um, the investment thesis. Here, what you see to the left, so between zero and one X, these are losing investments. These are investments that either break even or actually lose money for the investments. And the number here can be quite staggering for somebody from outside of the industry. This is uh, 64, almost 65%. The data that I'm presenting, by the way, is taken from uh, 21,000 investments. It's from uh, co a Coalition uh, Ventures, a study that was conducted over uh, nine years. It's not a study, it's actually it's a statistic from somebody from the industry, yeah? from, from a venture capital. Um, so it's, uh, it's accurate and, and reliable. Um, on the right-hand side of the, of the left graph, what you can see is the 10x investments. Right? And, and these are the investments that really impact the um, returns of, of the entire fund. So the graph to the right shows you uh, returns of a whole fund, not of a single investment, but the entire fund, all the companies in the fund. Uh, and, and what you can see is almost uh, something that looks almost linear. Uh, so the more 10x investments that you have, the higher the return of the entire fund. So the, the main takeaway from this is that the business needs to be able to grow to uh, 10x or plus in order for a VC to be interested in it. So if you have, um, uh, I don't know, a, a standard shop, you're selling whatever it is, groceries, and there's no hyper growth in it, it can be a good business, but I think it, it will not really fit to, uh, to VCs. So uh, it doesn't mean anything about a business, just it doesn't fit the, the model. And I think that this model is important to understand when you as an entrepreneur approach investors, potential investors, this is what they would like to see. I see that I'm a bit behind, so I'll keep it uh, fast. So um, in Europe, um, what you can see lately is uh, an increase in the uh, number of investment rounds as well as in the value of the um, of the investments. 
Uh, this is information uh, coming from, from PitchBook. So it's up to September 30. You can see also the effect of COVID over there. I'll skip this and zoom in a bit on the CEE. So investments in the CE, this is uh, data that is relevant until uh, July, actually. So you see the really big hit in 2020, but overall increase in the um, amount of money that is being funneled towards the region, towards the Central and uh, East Europe. Um, one more piece of, uh, of uh, information that was released just this morning, so I didn't get a chance to incorporate it, is that... Um, Poland at this time of the year, pretty much like July, what you see was in approximately um, 0.1 billion dollars and ended the year, ended 2021 with 0 0.5. Okay? So it means the um, this graph that represents the CE should be at least at 0 0.5, but probably, uh, probably above. Yeah? 0 0.5 is only Poland. To the right side, what you can see is what, call, what is called a dry powder. Um, dry powder, in essence, is money that was already committed by uh, LPs to the funds, but it was not invested yet. So these are investment managers that they have still this 5.6 billion uh, euros, sorry, to invest. This is money that will be deployed in the future. Um, a more, uh, a less serious uh, comment on dry powder. This is how it looks like. Yeah. So the first one is the. Uh, mayor of um, mayor of Miami, I know of at least one startup company worth at least 100 million. Looking to relocate to Miami, worried it won't be able to attract capital. The second one is uh, an investor in uh, in SoftBank. Give them my number. We have a lot of dry powder. Yeah, this is taken from from Twitter, but this is how it looks like. So investors with dry powder are more eager to invest because as an investor. Uh, Let's, let's say investors don't want to give money back to say, okay, you gave us the mandate to invest. I have no good investments. I give you the money back as an LP. So in the industry, it doesn't happen a lot. This is uh, zooming in on the, on the CE region. So what you can see here is data from 2013 onwards. Poland is definitely leading in the number of rounds of investment rounds with 823. This is data taken from, uh, from PFR. And, uh, and the deal room. If you compare it to Croatia, for example, Croatia gets what, 14, 15 investments per year on, on average and, and uh, the Polish one is about 100. Um, if you, again, data that came this morning, if you wanna look at the amounts, so the amount of investments in Poland grew 10X, it's not a mistake, 10X since 2018. So 10X in two years, which is mind blowing, yeah? it's, it's staggering. <clears throat> and uh, what does it all mean mean for you as an entrepreneur um, it has never been easier to raise money yeah? so there was never an easier time in history to raise money now it doesn't say easy I, I, don't, I don't mean easy completely but historically if you look five years back 10 years back 15 now is is the best time in history to raise money especially in this region 